Yeah. So my question was, <laughs> what made you all decide to jump back into the world of Madagascar? Dana, you want to take that? Yeah, um, I, uh, so I was a fan of the movies. I loved watching the movies and uh, I, I was working with DreamWorks and they had a few upcoming projects. And then when they mentioned that they were, um, when they were working on a new Madagascar series, I jumped on the opportunity. Um, I love the characters uh, and uh, I, I love the idea of reimagining characters as the younger kid versions of themselves that you never saw before. And uh, I was just so excited to jump in and do that. You guys had mentioned a little while ago that your was played as a city, played a part in the making and creating of the plots. So I was wondering how you kind of a little bit more detail about that and how you incorporated New York as its own character because New York is so specific. Um, and as I remember, I loved the Madagascar movies, but as a lifelong New Yorker who spent most of her childhood going to the Central Park Zoo, I remember the first thing being, those animals aren't at the zoo. That's the problem. <laughs> right. Right. Because the Central Park Zoo is super tiny. So... Yeah. That I was also older, so that was my one little thing. <laughs> but I think that it's really like even this the park itself is so specific. So how did you find ways to incorporate New York as its own character and also draw just draw inspiration from it as a city? Well, I think as you know, as a television show, we have limitations of like you know time and budget. We we can't represent New York faithfully so beautifully and so specifically as or a legally movie. in some cases <laughs> right. there are actual legal issues um so part of what what we did um is that we this is a representation of new york right we what we did is we you know a lot of dana's lived in new york city a lot of people on our on our crew and specifically our design crew know it very well we've been there um we actually went to, uh, actually not, I, I didn't, um, Jessica Belinsky and, and um, Saul Blinkoff uh, on, our, on our crew took the designers to uh, Universal City and toured the back lot, you know, that the back lot. Yeah. And so, and talked about how to represent New York City, um, you know, if we can't have it all, how do we re represent faithfully the ideas of New York City? And, you know, especially our emotional, what, how are we emotionally attached to New York City in the, in the, you know, the visual ideas of it? So I think what you see when you look at our, you know, again, we don't have the, the uh, we, we're limited at, with, with time and um, budget. I mean, we have great budget, don't get me wrong. But of course. <laughs> now, like, um, so uh, what you see in, in our New York City is New York through a child's eyes, as opposed to this is exactly what, you know, the Empire State Building looks like. You know? that, that's exactly it. Um, I grew up in New Jersey, but my, my, my grandparents were all born in Brooklyn. My mom grew up in Queens. Like I grew up going into the city all the time. Um, and it felt like my Disneyland, yeah. like it felt like the place where uh, anything was possible. And so, uh, you know, uh, in developing the show, and I love that you said New York as a character, because that's exactly what we want it to feel like. It's a character in the show. Um, I wanted it to feel like this childlike sense of wonder of looking around. This is the sort of candy colored version of New York that through a child's eyes of everything feels so big. Everything feels so exciting and larger than life and like anything is possible. And the way that that manifests itself in the series is that our, our all, all of our kids have this sense of anything's possible. Yes, I live in this rescue habitat in the Central Park Zoo. Um, and yes, I am a hippo, I'm a lion, I'm a zebra, I'm a giraffe, but I can do whatever I want to do because I'm a New Yorker and nobody's going to stop me. Um, yeah. so that spirit of New York and that sort of sense of wonder and that sort of sense of, of possibility is, is sort of what we've infused in that character. Yeah, and also anything can happen in New York. I mean, not just your... True you know, here's what we want to go do, but we can throw characters curveballs because, you know, it, it's New York. a predictable lady, yeah. New York. 
Yeah, thank you. Thank you so much. Hi, guys. Hi. Hi. Sorry, um, technical difficulties, right? <laughs> okay, my virtual there. backdrop when I signed on was a, was a happy birthday to my husband. <laughs> so I, I feel it. I feel your pain. <laughs> um, no, but thank you. Um, so um, in watching the screeners, um, I thought it was great. I watched it with my five and eight-year-old. And um, what I loved seeing was in a lot of the episodes, we saw a lot of sign language. And my kids are learning sign language in school as we speak. So this was really relevant. That's and um, so I just kind of wanted to get what was the idea behind of implementing sign language into the series? Danny, you want to speak about coming up with the pickles? Yeah. And yeah. So there was a little bit of signing from the, um, uh, the chimps in the, um, in the movies. And I thought that would be a great thing to lean into. Uh, one thing that's so great about New York is that it represents so many different people. And we, you know, it was really important to me that the series represented so many different people. Um, and that we had an ASL character who's, uh, an ASL speaking character whose main trait wasn't the fact that they speak ASL. They're a really funny character and there are, are you know, comedic relief in the series. Um, and to have that, sorry, I have lots of dogs. Um, to have that sort of um, representation in the series is wonderful and, and a great way uh, for, uh, to expose a, a wider audience to ASL and also show the different ways uh, that people, people and animals communicate. It's also from, a, from an animation point of view, from a, because it is a visual language, it's, it's just really interesting and fun and, and uh, it's completely additive. And also the fact that, uh, that chimps kind of have two sets of hands. So we, you know, that's another element where we get to have, you know, we get to have a lot of, of fun and, and it really adds, adds visual um, excitement to the, to the scenes. Awesome. Well, we love it. Thank you, ladies. Can I ask you a question? Are your kids, um, are they in a school where it's just uh, ASL is offered as a second language? Um, they're in a Montessori school. Um, my oldest has autism and so it was like the perfect fit and they pretty much teach them uh, because we there's a lot of kids that are not vocal uh, with you know because of autism and stuff and so they teach them ASL. Amazing. That's Thank fantastic. You. My my uh, my mother is a teacher uh, from in a school um, uh, where a lot of autistic children attend, and she um, growing up she used sorry and my daughter is is also being homeschooled at the moment or is is virtually schooled at the moment. Um, but uh, yeah, she's growing up. She used a lot of ASL uh, with us just naturally because most of her students were were learning and speaking ASL, and it's just a, a wonderful way to communicate. And when my daughter was born, that was you know the first. First thing she said is, you know, before, you know, the, the primary way for a baby to speak is through ASL and it's such a wonderful form of communication. And, um, and so she was, she, she was a, a big influence in, in trying to, um, you know, uh, learn ASL and, and incorporate it into, into our lives. Um, so um, another question that I had in viewing the series was um, we really love the comedic aspect of the series. And so um, even as adults, me and my husband were like, this is really funny, yeah. you know, but to kind of put it in a, in a perspective for kids to also understand like little puns and stuff. Um, I was just curious, were you guys, um, you know, sitting around and saying like, you know, coming up with this stuff or were you guys kind of like, you know, this has happened with my kid, let's throw it in there kind of thing. I was just wondering what, exp what inspired the comedy in the series. We have a great room of writers. Mm -hmm. um, we have a fantastic writers room. Um, Denise, Sam, Roxy, and Laura, they are fantastic. Um, and they are very funny. Um, and, uh, you know, sometimes in the room, we'll just, we'll have brainstorms of jokes and how do we punch something up? Sometimes even after, you know, we have a, a story that's really uh, emotional um, and we are like, this is such a great story, but we also want to laugh and not just cry. And uh, we'll, we'll do a brainstorm after and everyone will bring in their own punches and their own ideas. Um, but yeah, it was really, the, the movies were so funny, so it was really important, you know, uh, for uh, everyone who knows and loves the movies to come back and say, like, you know, there's, there's an expectation. So we, the, a high bar was set for us. I, and I think also what's really interesting about the process of animation 
is we start with, you know, by the time we, the writers finish a script, it's in hilarious shape, but it gets to keep going along the yes. production pipeline. Yes. So with every set of hands that touches it are from our directors and storyboard artists, our editors. Adds They're hilarious, yes. Timing yes. is very much a part of comedy. They, they, you know, we'll do a whole scratch session where we temper, you know, we record the voices beforehand. We find jokes in how to deliver a joke our, and our editors will like, while they're working alone, they'll add jokes in. Then once we get the actors in to record, there that's a whole other moment where when, when we're sitting in the studio, well, not in the studio, just here in this box. But anyway, when we're sitting listening, one of our actors and our kids are incredibly funny. Yes. Our actors will also find spins on lines. Some of, sometimes these kids will improvise stuff and we're like, I, they just, yes. they just topped a joke that we have been working on for months. So it's, um, it really is part of the, what's so wonderful about this process is it gives us many opportunities to continue to uh, plus the comedy, which is how we call it. And, and, and then just, I think why it's so important, you know, I talked earlier about the heart of the show is sort of what, what is, I think we're all very united in making sure that these stories deliver, uh, you know, certain themes, but that medicine, if you want to call it that, goes down so much more easily and pleasantly when there's comedy, you know, you, it's, it's a really beautiful delivery system, which, so that's why the comedy is equally important. Yes, um, so like, to, to what Joanna was saying, when we first, um, when we first saw the animatics and the board artists, you know, we, we thought like, oh, this is, this is a fun, funny script. And then, you know, we've seen this a hundred times and then all of a sudden we see it in animatic and we're cracking up because the directors and the board artists and, and everyone has added so much comedy to it and so much physical comedy. And that was such a huge part of the movies too, was this sense of physical okay. comedy. And uh, Joanna, to, I think you had, you're the one who had mentioned that TJ is almost like an actor. Um, oh yeah. That, and he so he, when we're trying to figure out, you know, when we're watching an, an, an so an animatic is the storyboards edited together before anything's been animated and, and we'll watch one and, and, you know, we'll be just again, noting the moments that could be better. We think could be better. And our, everybody does this, but TJ is what is, uh, he's our supervising director. He'll, he would get up and literally act out. You know, he is Melman for, for 10 seconds while he's, presenting to us why this kind of neck move would be funnier than this. So uh, that's a, a huge part of it. And I, and I do want to say, I, I stopped before I should have, before I should have, once it gets to animation, animation is a whole other, so we go, when we go from Boris to animation, that's where we find the comedy of how each of our characters move. You know, Melman's neck is its own character and it's a hilarious character. Yes. And <laughs> so much. And then when we get to even sound in our, in our post, we get to sound and music. So again, the comedy is, is you know, woven throughout every aspect. Um, but, I, but thank you, by the way, for even yeah. highlighting that because I'm, I'm really happy to hear that it's, that it's working. No, no, it's, it's fantastic. And for my five-year-old to get some of the puns in there and my eight-year-old, I mean, I just think it's great, you know, because they were belly laughing on some of these. So I think it's great. But we thank actually, you, ladies, so much. Thank you. We actually, just to let you know, we have a pun jar in our room, um, in the <laughs> writer's room. We love puns so much that we've started charging for them. And you have to either uh, add a quarter or buy someone a stamp um, <laughs> every time you use a pun. Um, so they're pretty prominent. So we appreciate that, that recognition. That's awesome. Thank you, ladies. Thank you so much. Hi. My question was for Johanna, because I had read that you were the voice of Millie. And, this, oh, and yeah. I just wondered how that came about. Yes. Well, we, uh, we were, you know, we do a lot of scratch, which is sort of temporary record. You know, we, we have to do that to record voices for our animators before we ever actually cast some characters um, just for efficiency. And I'd been doing the scratch voice for it. So as we were auditioning people, we were never able to quite get a voice that then fit how the character was being animated. So, um, you know, several folks on our crew just said, why don't you just do the voice? So then we, <laughs> we kicked that around and talked to um, 
the higher ups at DreamWorks and everybody was on board. And uh, I am now uh, Millie. So um, my question was, I mean, these animals, they're, they're going everywhere. They're at the, the ball game and the museum one minute. Well, I don't know who chaperoned them, but they're everywhere, right? <laughs> <laughs> so I just wonder right. though, like where else are their travels going to take them? Are they eventually going to go to Africa or, you know? <laughs> Oh, where else will their travels take? Is that what you just asked? Well, we, we can't give away too much because, you know, we want, we want people to watch. Uh, but they will go beyond New York City. Can I say that, Dana? Yeah, I would say keep be on the lookout for the tri-state area. For yeah. sure. <laughs> and maybe beyond. Um, maybe yeah, beyond. The, the show. Yeah. That yes, gonna... maybe far bonds. Yeah, we, we have a lot of, a lot of opportunities to, to do that, um, which will surprise you all with yeah yeah but but having said that mm -hmm. there's a lot in new york city um to see and there's actually there's a lot in the zoo to see too so there's there there's definitely um you will see more well, i'm looking forward to it thank you <laughs> thank you so much hey, amy nice um, to meet you Nice to meet you. So I know you guys hired a consultant to inform the series when it came to diversity and inclusion. And I'm kind of wanting to know how that ended up happening and how it's impacted the production so far. I'm trying to remember how, how and then, do you remember when we brought Dr. Hunt on, Dana? We brought Dr. Hunt on um, toward the beginning. Um, I think it was part of when we were when we were first casting for voices, and we yes. wanted to um, yeah, we wanted to get his perspective on yeah. on casting and uh, lines too. I, I mean, I would say that as an animated, I mean, he he informs our show on every level, uh, not just creatively. And Dr. Hunt is actually one of several um, consultants we've worked with, but he was the first consultant we brought in. Um, we were just, you know, very aware that a this this the show was happening in New York City, just a diverse city on all levels, um, and also our kids are a diverse group. Or by kids, I mean are forming the main characters from Madagascar are now youngified. Um, but when it comes to animation, we have to create everything from the ground up. We can't say, well, you know, we're just casting from the available pool. We have to be very uh, mindful and deliberate about how we, um, about, about all of the, every single design and every representation. So we knew right away we needed, uh, we, we were just looking for help. We wanted to make sure that we were being responsive, responsible, respectful. Um, we didn't want to, uh, you know, we, we wanted to have him shine a light on any areas that we were just, you know, I, I speaking for myself, I, I know what I don't know, and that's a lot. So I, we really look to him to listen to our voice actors, look at our designs, read our scripts, mm -hmm. and you know, let us know if, there's, or if there are any things that we're like, you know, you, you might want to think about how this will be interpreted. Um, so he's, he's been really instrumental. Did I miss anything, Dana? No, uh, it's, yeah, he's been fantastic. And, and, um, you know, there's so, sometimes we'll give him a script and say, Hey, this was an area we weren't really sure about. And we wanted your opinion because of X, Y, and Z. And he'd say, well, that's fine. But actually I see this other thing here that, you know, might've been a blind spot for you. And, and here's, or, or excuse me, that, that was the wrong, um, terminology, but, um, that, that, that might've given you, you know, a, a new perspective to take yeah. a look at. Um, so, um, yeah, he's, he's also, been in value. He's also, um, you know, come and given uh, conversations. We've had conversations between him and our entire crew. He's he's sort of led us led us in conversations because also sometimes have, having discussions about this in a creative context. You know, we we again our priority is um, making sure everybody's heard, yeah, and also making sure that we all you know that we're all very responsible and respectful with with all of our creative communication and, and also with how we're presenting our show to the world. And looking for opportunities to, um, for new, you know, for forms of representation that we might not have seen, you know, yeah. uh, uh, in other shows and that we were excited to bring to the table. He's been really instrumental in helping us. Yeah, he kind of, he's a bit of a secret weapon. Okay. So what I wanted to know about, I know it's really common to have 
child characters voiced by adults when they're doing voice acting. You've got a lot of kids you're working with. What's that been like? And how was that decision to use children for the kids in the show made? Yeah, it was it, very early on, right? We, it, it was definitely a choice. Um, I, I'll say that it, my initial instinct, uh, I actually was leaning initially towards grownups until, because I, I'm aware, you know, grownups have more, more experience, grownup actors, right? So, and they can be very funny, but um, we, I was very open, thank goodness. <laughs> Uh, to hearing kids, and it, it became clear very quickly that uh, that we could find kids who were capable of delivering the comedy. That really was my was my number one concern: was can kids be as funny as we need them to be? And I, you know, it was not it was not an issue. These kids are as as funny um, as any adult could be. Um, it, in some, I mean, they're just, they're kind of, they're perfect. I, I, now I can't imagine having thought <laughs> that grownups would play these characters. Um, and, you know, I think it's, it also allows them to be so, so much more vulnerable. You know, we, I think we really believe in you know, that these kids are the kid versions of the grownup selves. I think also because they're existing, yes. um, you know, I don't know that we, we never, set out to like we would never have said to ben stiller can you play this but make your voice sound younger um and i don't know that we would have you know even tried to emulate his sound with a kid we really were just looking for uh children performers who could embody the essences and the spirits of those characters um and that's what we got like they're they're incredible actors yeah, they're, they're wonderful. And we, we had um, in the early stages of development, we kind of put together a music video and we used children for that. And it was just such a knockout music video. And they, the, the kids were incredible. Um, and it sort of, uh, before this even started, kind of gave life to, to who these characters are. Um, uh, and it made us realize how, how perfect they are. And, and, you know, as Joanna said, the, the actors are just absolutely outstanding. Uh -huh. They're lovely, and it's been um, just the experience of working when, with them specifically through, you know, now we're recording with them like this, which is kind of amazing, and getting to, you know, we, we already were familiar with their families, that, and they're all, you know, we're getting to know them even more, and it's such a, it's just such a, a, a lovely um, side effect of this experience of working like this is we're getting to know them really well and getting to know their families and their dogs and their siblings. Um, and they're just, they are, as we get deeper into the show, uh, cause we're, you know, production wise, we're pretty deep into it now. They are, you know, their personalities are melding with the person, you know, and, and they're informing the episodes as we go. That's amazing. Thank you so much. Thank, Thank you. you. Hi, Lynette. Hi. Hello, how are you? I'm good, thank you. How are you guys doing? Good. So I'd like to know if there are any challenges to working on a project where the main characters are already established. You know, we already know their stories and everything else. So are there any challenges to that? Uh, I don't, I mean, you go ahead. I was gonna say that uh, what's interesting, I actually look at it almost as the opposite. It's this great opportunity to reimagine who these characters are as children and really lean into their um, quirks. I'll say this, what's interesting about, for example, a character like Alex, who's this brash, you know, we look at him as kind of a, you know, one of his qualities is he's ego driven. And, you know, in, in writing shows, we actually love characters who have flaws. That's what makes for um, interesting stories. At the same time, it can be challenging to represent a character who leads with ego. You know, you don't want that character to be unlikable because that can be a really unlikable um, characteristic. So uh, we have, you know, that, but what that becomes, it, it becomes very informative. Like in casting, we knew we needed a kid who could be brash uh, and, and egoic, but also you could see his vulnerability. So I, I think, I guess what I'm saying is that the challenges are, uh, can be in identifying uh, some of those characteristics uh, 
that that work in an adult, but making but making them palatable in a in a child. And, and part of the um, I think what's been nice is because they're kids, there's there's a certain forgiveness. We a lot of our stories kind of start out from this. Um, childlike naivete and like the, this, uh, this sense of kind of uh, a ridiculous, sometimes misunderstanding of the world and, and these kid-like feelings that are very real um, and important. And then um, when you put them on these characters, they're, they're very forgiving. Um, so we, yeah, we were very lucky to start out with these really interesting, I have, um, <laughs> I have two of them. I'm thankful they're listening right now. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Odette. <laughs> uh, um, and, uh, but other challenges, uh, sorry, I'm sorry, Lynette, did you ask another question? Or you no, I was just saying, I get it, Dana, I feel. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, I think the, the other challenge, obviously, there are certain adult ideas and topics in the movies that we wouldn't get into. You know, we, um, we might not have a scene like Gloria and uh, Moto, you know, that. Oh, I love Moto Moto. <laughs> amazing, but we wouldn't have a scene like that. So it's not so much that's a challenge. You know, we're just not going to show that kind of dynamic in a, in a preschool show. It's a little, a little early for that. Um, out of all the characters, is there one that you can relate to the most? And if so, why? Relate to. Well, I'll tell you that our writer's room decided that we're all uh, Marty's, <laughs> that all of us are Marty's, so um, we get our homework done. <laughs> I was going to say, in what, in what respect, Dana? What, in what um, respect? Just that we're, uh, you know, we, we uh, attention to detail, get our homework done, a little bit type A, okay. um, yeah. even, you know, uh, there's, there's a little bit of glory in all of us also. I think... Um, you know, who we want to be versus who we are is a different yeah. question. I want to be Gloria. Yeah. You Marty. I think um, I, that's so true, Dana. I, I think <laughs> also the character who, uh, to me, Alex speaks very much to our, <laughs> to everybody's, like, I'm most ashamed of these qualities when they come out. He really, he has some, he, he's, he's fun and challenging to, right for because he is a and you know he's in what about me how come i don't he's a, he has a lot of that aspect to his person he's our inner monologue <laughs> yes exactly so he's it's kind of fun to put him in <laughs> uncomfortable positions to and let him work out you know he, he also has a lot of social um challenges to work out with with interacting i mean every all i guess all of the characters do but for some reason, his are, when he finally learns the lesson, it's kind of, it's really poignant. Because I, I, I can, you know, like, oh, that was a hard lesson, right? Oh. <laughs> like when someone's learning a lesson about be brave, we, we're all rooting for him. But when someone's learning about, oh, I was being really selfish there, you know, we're all like, yeah, that was a tough lesson, but I'm glad, <laughs> glad, I, glad I got that one. Alex has some unexpected, um inner wisdom though in the sense that he uh be, he he both cares so much about what people think and also is so uh it's me i'm out there that you know he does he does bring some inner wisdom to the table and we've found um throughout the episodes that he's sometimes a nice counter to you know sort of embodying whatever the lesson we're trying to to show is uh because he has this sense of like yeah it is you know this it is what it is and it's not even um it's not a relaxed nature so much of a, as a uh, I am who I am. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you so much. Hi, Hi ladies. Jess. How are you? Good. Good. How are you? Good. Thanks so much for taking the time today. Um, I watched this with my seven and nine year old. We watched the screeners. We were having a blast. We really enjoyed it. Thought it was a lot of fun. We're big fans of the movies and this, this is a great continuation. Um, but I really like all the songs. And so I want to know how it came about. Was it always the plan from the beginning to have songs like this? And, and they're just also catchy. And do you guys have a favorite? Oh, uh, wow. That's a tough one. <laughs> It, it was it, it was a plan from the beginning, right, Dana? To, yeah, to so the, the thought was I, I have a five-year-old and um, 
I listen to a lot of uh, children's uh, TV and music in the background. And I think there was a day where there was just like some terrible song stuck in my head that I couldn't get out of. Uh, and, uh, you know, uh, there, this felt, um, being set in New York and, and having these incredible characters felt like a great opportunity to make it a musical series. And DreamWorks uh, in all their series, uh, you know, has this motto, this like motto that they don't want to make great music for kids. They want to make great music and they do. Um, and so we were really lucky in that regard that, you know, the plan was to make great music, but you can have a plan, but you need someone to implement it. And we were uh, very, very lucky in that regard. Yeah. We, we are, I don't know if you, uh, if, if you know our, our, I mean, we have an amazing music department at DreamWorks who really give us the world and they, they um, introduced us to Alana D who's the songwriter. And I mean, her, you know, my, our, the, the, the meetings during which we are uh, presented with songs like, well, here, you know, we'll have pitched a song the first time we hear it almost every time the meeting will spontaneously break into a dance party. That's, and I'm not lying about that. That's true. Uh, it's um, she has a really incredible ability to take musically and lyrically whatever idea we throw at her and turn around a song that works perfectly. Um, and the other thing I think is really special about these songs is they're not just filler. They're they are actually emotional songs that embody the theme that, um, you know, that so they actually, you know, they work the way music does in Broadway musicals, right? They're, they're not just filler. So, you know, my hope is that with a song like Keep Going in 101, that's a song about tenacity, that it's not just a song a kid will enjoy while they're watching it, but, how, you know, the idea that someone, that a, that a kid would be singing it to themselves or, you know, humming it or playing it a thousand times, driving you crazy. <laughs> that's, that's the hope is that, is that, you know, it actually does support the, the ideas that we're, that we're trying to um, communicate. Yeah, thank you. I mean, I actually liked the songs too, and I trust me, I've had horrible songs stuck in my head. So it's a nice, it's it's refreshing to have a song that's actually good stuck in my head. So thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, so to t kind of touch on what Amy was talking about, you guys hiring um the kid voice actors. Are there any of the voice actors from the movies that are going to maybe make a cameo? Obviously, not as their own characters, but as someone else. Or is there anyone you would really like to work with and have them do something with the with the show? Oh. Wow. Well, I don't know what we're allowed to say. <laughs> so um, there are a lot of people we would love to work with. I mean, yeah, there's a, there's a ton of, we, ha we have some really fun guest stars coming up. I, 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 I'll just tease you with that. People who are fantastic and we were really lucky and excited to work with. Um, I, I, love, I also say that uh, I want to, I do want to say something for the unsung heroes of voiceover that there are some of the, some of the, like the, um, some of the voices that people that we have worked with who are not necessarily celebrities mm -hmm. are incredible. And I can't imagine not, you know, them being replaced by, by someone who's famous or just because they're famous. Mm -hmm. um, but uh who, who, let's see, is there anybody you have, Dana, who's on your wish list? Who you would have <laughs> wish list? Mm -hmm. um, I don't know. We've, we've got someone <laughs> recently on our wish list, so that was exciting. Um, but yeah, I mean, because this is a, because mm -hmm. this, you know, a musical show, singers yeah. are always to us, obviously. Um, <sighs> That's so cool. Now I'm like so excited and intrigued. <laughs> yeah, it's a good one. Um, <laughs> but, uh, you know, I think, um, because, because of what our show is and what we, you know, that we feel really passionately about, not about the messages, if I can call it that, mm -hmm. I think the idea of having anybody who's passionate about that and about, you know, as opposed to just like the idea of just stunt casting someone is less appealing than finding someone who who is sort of aligned with our ideal, I, our ideals and gets really exci excited about a story. I think sometimes we will have a storyline that will say, who is an actor uh, or personality who meshes well with this theme? That's, that's really kind of more what happens, right, Dan, as we, as we talk about, we don't, we don't really have care people isolated from story that we're like, oh, randomly I'd like to work with 
this person, but we do talk about, ooh, this person would be fantastic for this, this uh, story about um, labels. You know, we have a story of like talking about it. it so we, we look at it in those terms. So I would just say if there's anybody uh, famous who, uh, and excited wants to work with us, please reach out. We're wide open. <laughs> Awesome. Thank you, guys. Bye. Thank you. Hi, Patty. Hello. Hi, ladies. How are you? No guilt life. Nice. How are you doing? I'm hanging in there. Um, <laughs> I have to tell you guys real quickly, thank you so much for, for meeting with us and making me look really good. I have a nine-year-old, and when I told her that I was interviewing two executive producers who were women of the show that she watched with me last night, she geeked out. So oh, I love that. You're, yeah. you're changing lives over here and you're making me look good. And I appreciate Great. that. Um, <laughs> but my question that. for you is uh, when we were watching this together, she loved it. And immediately when we finished it, you know, wanted to watch the next one, and the next one, and the next one. And I just had that moment where I was like, this is something that I think kids are really going to like, it's a keeper. It's something kids are going to remember. So thinking to the future, in 10 years, what do you want kids who are watching the show now to oh. remember from, from this experience, from what you guys oh. have put together? That's, the, that's such a good question. Um, I, well, to, to me, um, I love this. Sh I love working on the show. And I, 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 it, it's, very, it's really fun. The stories are really interesting. I love the characters. But I, um, what gets me and what sometimes honestly chokes me up is the heart of the show. And I'll have seen an episode, I can't tell you how many times by the time we get to the end of it, of, of, a, of the, you know, pipeline of an episode. It's the, it's the relationships between the characters, the love that they have for each other, the friendship and the fact that they deal with these issues as, you know, as, as friends and as a team, I think is really powerful. And I feel like, you know, especially now in this world we're living in, with so many challenges that none of us could have anticipated, um, it's such a, it, it, it warms my heart, so many aspects of it. And I would hope that in 10 years that a, a kid remembers that, that the show um, was like just a, just a, a lovely balm, B-A-L-M, is that how you say that? <laughs> uh, for their soul, because that's what when I'm watching it for the 900th time, I get that feeling like, oh my God, I'm so, I just feel so heartwarmed by it. So that's what I, that's what I would hope. Yeah, I, I agree with Joanna. We put, a, you know, a ton of heart and the whole production put so much heart into this show and into the stories. Um, and one thing that we've referenced a few times is, uh, you know, so many kids grow up uh, remembering like Mr. Rogers and the first time they saw like some memorable episode about you know something that affected their lives and something that we've tried to do is to infuse our episodes with these issues that are very real and, and feel very real to children um, and kind of touch on them in a way that that we hope is is something maybe they haven't quite seen before um, and might be able to just exactly what you're saying, you know, 10 years from now saying, oh, I remember when I saw that specific episode. Um, so we're hopeful for that. Thanks, ladies. Thank you. Thank you so much. Tell your, tell your daughter, hi. Oh. <laughs> uh, so I have a question about your creative process. At what point, what's your favorite, like, Mm, that's my favorite part of this whole thing. And we just nailed it. Like, you know, you know that feeling you get? What, what part is that for you and your creative processes? I, I got, I mean, for me, uh, Dana knows I'm going to, I've said this before. For me, the, the candy is collaboration. Cause I, I've been a, I've been a writer. I've written by myself and that's great. <laughs> tough as you know I'm sure uh, and it's a great you know it's wonderful to be able to express but for me the collaborative nature of animation mm -hmm. that you I, none of us not one person on this crew could do could make this show without the rest of us there's something that is so energizing about about bouncing ideas you know about giving somebody an idea having them bat it around throwing it back to you 
when, or, as Dana was saying, when we see a script in, a, in an animatic storyboard, it, uh, it's, it's incredible because somebody has just plussed our idea and made it better or a joke and made it better. But, and we have a lot of opportunities throughout our process to work together. There are very, you know, there are a few moments along the, this process where you're working by yourself, you're writing or you're designing or you're storyboarding that, but there's a lot of collaboration in all of our departments. And to me, I just, it's so, you know, it, it, it I, I love it. That's awesome. Dana, do you have a, a specific? Yeah, well, I mean, I would say one, I, I would start us specifically, I would say our um, happy hour outline breaks are probably my favorite. <laughs> yes. Yes. And then, um, yeah, I was, would say the, you know, the cool thing about animation is it's almost, you know, you see movies and TV shows where kids have like a stuffed animal that they bring to life and how incredible is that? And like, we get to bring our stuffed animals to life. We get to bring our ideas to life and getting to see that um, and getting to see the team, you know, present to us, you know, these ideas that started off as a spark and then we get to sit down and see what they have turned this into is like, oh my gosh, my, my, my stuffy just started talking. My, my, this little thing in my brain now lives in the outside world. And that is a really cool part of the process. Yeah. Uh, I, I will add, so, uh, this one is just a, go a goofy one, but um, we go through, uh, I mean, the records obviously are really fun and our, and our, by the way, our uh, voice director, Charlie Adler, look him up. He is, he is incredible. Uh, voiceover royalty and he is fantastic and hilarious and we have a really fun time in records but um when we do sound effects sound effects spotting you know it's go that in its own is just a fun like should the sound be or should it be a, you know like <laughs> that's just a really and just that you know i'm i'm constantly saying to you know dana like i can't we really get paid to do this okay it's crazy yeah what color awesome. should this not be? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> this not is too green. Right. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you so much. Hi. Hi. You're on the moon. It takes Hi, a while. Are you? I, I am on the moon because it's you have a battery in my car hanging out in Lake Placid for the day. Yeah. And um, you'll love have to see my motorboat hair from this morning. Um, beautiful. Yeah. So I kind of, you know, to touch a little bit on the subject you just talked about with Patty, but what comes first when you guys are working on these? Is it more of sort of the moral of each episode or is it the story itself when you're planning? We, it, it can be any, I feel like there's several areas that we talk about. Uh, and especially we, you know, we have a lot of episodes to make. So it's, it's not as though we have, these are the themes we want to hit and we have to nail them all. Um, we do talk a lot about, concept, you know, ideas, not so much educational, but more themes. What are important themes to us as humans, not even, you know, as parents, yes, as people who were children, yes, but as humans, what's a, what's an important idea? Sure. Um, you know, the idea of acceptance or um, tenacity or, you know, boundaries, like what, what are important key concepts? Um, we also talk about, we talk about characters and their you know, specific characteristics. How can we lean into, um, you know, Melman's uh, caution? What's a fun way to to explore that idea? Um, we also uh, talk about the city of New York and, and what our experience is in New York because it's such a great playground. Um, we often talk about. Sometimes we talk about music too. Like what's a, what's a great kind of music that we'd like to play with? Um, what are other, some other things, Dana? Yeah, we're... I think something that's, that's actually worked really nicely for us is um, going around and saying like, this happened to me as a kid and I'll never forget it. And it's traumatized me or, you know, something, something okay. that, you know, really uh, stood out with us. And we say, okay, what is the version of that in our story? Is it, you know, uh, you know, my birthday party got, canceled because of the weather well what's what how does that uh come out in my story i went for an audition and i didn't see anyone who looked like me things like that how how does that manifest itself um within our world and i think that that's worked really really nicely because you have these stories then that feel very very real because they are real um that are based in these sort of kid-like um 
these kid-like feelings, but that have this sort of broader social, emotional, and societal sort of challenges to them that, that lend naturally to the stories. So that, that's been a really nice way of sort of um, manifesting some of the stories for us. Yeah, e even though we are not four animals living in a habitat in the <laughs> Central Park Zoo, uh, we really do look for those analogs, you know, we, 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 we make sure that any story has a very kid relatable analog, you know, a metaphor. What, this is a metaphor for, as Dana was saying, I know what it, I know what it feels like to get in a argument with, argument with my friend. And I, I know exactly what that feels like. So we're very, you know, we're very mindful of as fun and antic as this story may be. If a kid, if a kid doesn't, can't relate to that feeling, if a person can't relate to that feeling, it's not working. So that's our, that's our guiding principle. So yeah. my question for you is if you guys could add any animal to the zoo crew, what animal would it be and why? Like which characteristics would it have? Mm. Huh. Well, I'm, we've sort of gotten our, our dream. I, our, yeah. oh. I'm not allowed to. Yeah, no, don't. I mean, we, we, we are built, we are growing the universe, our zoo universe. So I guess the answer is we're doing it. Oh, okay <laughs> um, then. Yes. Um, so a lot of exciting okay. ones. And because we place this in our rescue habitat, we've got this kind of ragtag group who are coming in and out from different scenarios. Um, and uh, it kind of gives a, a fun aspect. And, and uh, yeah. Yeah, I mean, awesome. we do think we, we have talked about, um, you know, different kinds of animals, you know, different sizes, different uh, to represent the diversity in the animal world, because that helps us represent the diversity in the world world. Uh, so we, we have leaned into that idea. Uh, so you will be seeing more. I mean, we'll always have our core four, um, but they're going to make some more friends. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that's it. I, I don't want to give away too much. There's some great surprises. No, oh, don't give away anything. That's fine. <laughs> Jenna, thank you so much. Hi, ladies. Um, we love the screener. We're big fans of the film franchise, so the kids were super excited about there being a new show. And I know Dana mentioned also being a fan. I was wondering, is there anything we can look for kind of like an Easter egg kind of thing from the, the movies in the show. Well, if you look real carefully at Alex's paw, you will see a birthmark, um, right? That's, that's yep. there. Um, I think the, you know, what's interesting is the, uh, there are a lot of visual Easter eggs, I would say, it, because the, you know, the, the movies are so beautifully designed um, and there, they, there's such a uh, specific visual style and language to them. And we, we adapted that for our show. Um, our, our, um, uh, our design team came up with a distinct, a look that sort of stood on the shoulders of the movies. But if you look carefully, so the, Kendall Cronkite was the um, production designer of the movies. And she came up with this whole visual language called the WACK. I think it's W-A-C-K or W-H-A-C-K. So if you look at the movies, and, and, and I'm, not, I'm not a designer or an artist at all, a visual artist, um, but it has to do with how there's no, there's no such thing as parallel lines in it. Um, so we, a lot of our design reflects that. So if you, I mean, if you were to, if you were to look at the two, you could see how our show is, uh, you know, visually representing the movies. Um, other other Easter eggs, Dana. Anything story-wise that we have? I mean, we we've updated it, so you know we have cell phones in our show. So. <laughs> <laughs> we definitely took a you know we we reimagined it. Yep. Yeah, right. It's a it's kind of a parallel timeline. I think so, they did have, they did have cell phones in the movies. They just looked different. Oh, that's right. We <laughs> have yeah. right and iPads in ours. <laughs> Um, I can't think of any other, other than like Pickles and Dave are an homage, I would say, to the chimps in uh, Madagascar 2. Mm -hmm. um, 
But no, I, I can't think of anything, and at least not in the first um, season. Well, we have our own, we've created our own Easter eggs. So within the series, you will find uh, there are a few kind of recurring Easter eggs in every episode that uh, we wanted kids to look out for that kind of uh, change just slightly every episode. So we had a lot of fun with those. Mm -hmm. So Joanna, I was reading, I was looking at your just like, your list of like all the things that you've done. You've kind of been, you know, you've been a writer, you've been on camera, you, you've just done it all. So which, do you have a preference? Which one do you like doing the most? And do you plan on possibly jumping in and writing for the show? Um, that is a great question. I, I love this, what I'm doing right now. I don't have a, I don't have a preference to be honest. I like to do it all. Um, I, as I said, I just like, I love, I love the collaborative nature of all of this. And I just, you know, I love to uh, create stuff. So w this is such an amazing outlet for that. Um, and do I, well, I, I'm actually quite involved in the writing. So and the way our process works. So I get to exercise my writing um, muscles a lot as well. We, you know, our, our scripts go through a lot of, you know, uh, we work together to break the outlines. We pass the scripts around. We punch each other's scripts up a lot. Um, and actually, Dana and I have written a script. Yeah. And we have a script. I th we think we can say that. Um, uh, but, you know, it's also an absolute joy to have writers who are so capable and, you know, can, who do such a wonderful job to feel like, no, it's okay. I don't need to, I can focus on this, on the other stuff. Because writing scripts actually takes, it, it, you know, it really demands for me, it demands a lot of uh, focused time. And as a EP, I don't have that. I'm, it's like, we're, I'm literally spinning, I think like 18 episodes at a time from beginning, maybe 20 to post. We have uh, literally 18 episodes in various um, spots there along the pipeline. So I don't really have the bandwidth to write, uh, but you know, someday after when we have a hiatus, <laughs> I'll write some. That's awesome. <laughs> Thank you, ladies. Thank you so much. <laughs> so I was thanking you for the show. We really enjoyed it. And I have, um, last night when we watched this, so I had a big audience of different age groups. And to me, the most surprising was the tween and the teen. They were so immersed in the program, and I didn't expect that at all. Um, and so even though we love, we love the, the franchise of you know, Madagascar, the adult animals and so forth. I didn't think that this would call so much their attention. And at the end, um, I, I gathered from their comments, what they liked the most was the fact that there is a lot of repetition, but it's not the same little words. You're sending the same message over and over again in different ways. So um, that, that, that also makes me think you're, helping the kids evolve and grow. So would you consider perhaps incorporating themes? I know you said that you, you talk about things that you've experienced, but would you consider incorporating things that are of actuality that we might help kids understand? Like, um, I don't know, virtual learning. Uh, why is all this craziness going? Uh, can we talk about the virus? Can we talk about things like that, that, you know, help kids in a different way we we do i mean we we actually have been talking about that right dana in the writer's yeah. room you know we yeah. we talk a lot we, we've been talking about this this situation we're all in right now um and we it, it's always a you know every story we talk about we we figure out how specific can we be like how specific versus how metaphorical and what's helpful. You know, sometimes it is helpful to be very specific about a story topic. Sometimes it's, it, you know, in our animal world, there are great analogs to represent an idea. Um, so we're, we're not opposed to it. I think the only, the biggest challenge for us is the fact that it takes, I think it's 63 weeks to make an episode. And that's, that's not like it takes to make it. And then, you know, then it's got to get on the air. So who knows how long, you know what I mean? So we, we can't do anything topical, obviously. Um, that, that's a bit of a limitation, but we're definitely open to, you know, specifics. 
Yeah, so we, we try and look at it, to, to Joanna's point, we try and look at it through this like sort of evergreen lens of, um, uh, can we can we address you know uh, the, this specific pandemic right now? We can't because it's going to come out in a you know as as Joanna said, it takes a long time to make the episodes. Um, but we can look at it as okay. There's something that's beyond my control that is getting the way of my day to day life. My life looks very different now. How do I address that? Um, uh, I have a friend who is sick. I have you know there are different th ways of looking at uh, the, you know, topical issues and kind of putting them through the lens of our world and also kind of making sure that they feel evergreen and that they, you know, it's something that you can go back to um, because it's the feeling that, um, that that situation creates more so than the exact, the exact situation itself. So um, we, we absolutely do when, when things like this come up, when topical things come up, we say, oh, yeah. how do we, how do we, um, how do we uh, inject this into our world? Yeah, we, we really do um, in the writer's room, but also, in, you know, within our, within our crew in general, we just, you know, we, we, especially now, we talk about personal stuff all the time and what's going on in our world. We're looking into each other's lives. And often we'll, we'll be like, How, this is a really interesting idea. This is an area where, where kids, you know, we, we would love to be the source of some positive guidance in this area. Um, but it is, you know, it's a mat, it's a matter of figuring out what the appropriate, effective way to do that in the context of animation is. But yeah, well, thank you. You're playing a big spectrum of ages in my house. So thank you for that. Wonderful. I love, love what, to hear that. Thank you for saying that about your, um, teen slash tween. That's really lovely to hear. That's great. Mm -hmm. So um, I was very curious to know if you have a favorite episode and what makes it so special to you. Wow. I, I, <laughs> I think for me, it's like children that every, whichever one I'm looking at is like, oh my God, this is the favorite. Um, but I, I honestly, there, there, there's something different, particularly in this first season. There's something in every episode that gets me. I don't know, Dana, do you have a favorite? I don't have a favorite. I, I was going to say the same thing. And, you know, it goes back to what I was saying last night, which is, uh, uh, you know, we go through the scripts and every time I'm like, oh, this is my new favorite. This is my new favorite. And, you know, if it's not, then it goes back to the drawing board until it becomes it. So I think, yeah, um, we, yeah, this is a question I always ask my mom, which one of us do you like the best? Um, <laughs> What does she say? <laughs> um, she doesn't. I asked about the grandchildren too, and she slipped once because I heard her say it to one of them, and I was like, oh. oh. Well, um, yeah, they're all, I mean, they, they really all, all have something to them. You know, part of that is that different people work on, you know, we, as a, as a team, uh, you know, these are all Madagascar episodes, but, you know, certain writers have yeah. certain incredible strengths, certain storyboard artists, you know, it, it, there's, there's some, and, and some of the song, it's just, there's, I can't, I can't Tati. There's no way. Don't <laughs> ask me to choose. <laughs> I mean, they're all your kids. Can I ask, what did you like? Was there an episode that you liked best of the ones you saw? Uh, I really loved the one um, where they're celebrating Melvin's very, very special day. Yeah. Um, because that's it's, ups and downs and and then he realizes oh i i only need my friends or it, it, mm. or my family or, you know my close-knit i don't need anything yeah, else yeah. okay so now that, that, that <laughs> now that you're saying that now i have to no but i i agree that one is so sweet and it's such a great melman we talk a lot about that one specifically about how it's a great melman episode and it really you you really get to understand who he is yes yes it was beautiful Right. <laughs> Felt that for his allergies. <laughs> oh, yeah. Right. Thank you, ladies. Thank, Thank you so much. Madagascar, a little wild.